do you want to know who the heavy hitters of G.I. Joe are? The guys that when you just have to delete every single Cobra Trooper on the field, you call these guys. Well, let's go through them. G'day all, welcome back to Frostbite's G.I. Joe Repro. Today we're going to go through the heavy hitters of G.I. Joe. So these are the guys that just, you know, usually they're not at the front of the battle. They're um, usually kept just in case that something is going bad or something needs to be done quickly. It's going to call these guys in and they're just going to fix any problems that you just had. Um, so we've got 10 of them. Let's go through them. Uh, first up, we've got Salvo. So, file name is uh, David K. Hassel. He's an E7, uh, born in Virginia in Arlington. Uh, his primary specialty is any armor trooper. His secondary specialty is uh, tow or dragon repair technician. Salvo has a deep distrust for high-tech weapons with laser, laser rangefinders, targeting computers and micro-circuit heat-seeking detonation components. Such complexity makes them inherently unreliable, especially in chaotic battlefield conditions, where dependability is the name of the game. Salvo prefers to carry great quantities of conventional weaponry to overwhelm enemy forces with massive expenditures of sheer firepower rather than battle them with sophisticated electronic warfare. Um, Salvo doesn't believe in wasting perfectly good ammunition on wooden targets or on firing ranges. Instead, he'd rather test his anti-armor projectiles on actual enemy tanks and APCs, such as the Cobra Hiss II. Nothing aggravates Salvo more than to go out and patrol and not find any Cobra targets to blow away. That would mean that he'd have to lug all of his unused ordnance back to GRJ headquarters, and he doesn't enjoy that at all. So uh, you can see on the PowerPoint, um, we've got um, Salvo V1, released in 1990. Um, so what do I like about this figure? Well, he's got two different weapon systems. Um, He's just absolutely a machine. Um, like it always just looks weird to me personally with this figure that he's just got so much stuff that he has trouble carrying. Um, but in terms of, you know, being a heavy hitter, this guy is definitely on the list. Um, and I, I love as well, just for the oddity of it, that his shirt always just says, the right of might. Like he's just walking in and pounding uh, Cobra vehicles with, you know, with whatever he can carry and then he's walking out again. So, yeah. Uh, next, we've got OG Roadblock. Uh, file name is Marvin Hinton. He's an E4 and he was born in uh, Mississippi. His primary specialty is infantry heavy weapons, and his secondary specialty is cook. Um, so Roadblock's dream was to become a gourmet chef. He was working as a bouncer to earn money to attend the Escoffa School. I know that's probably not pronounced right. Um, in France, when an army recruiter convinced him that the army could train him, Roadblock joined but found uh, army menus and preparation techniques too poor too appalling. Transferred to the infantry, uh, he's a qualified expert on M2 Browning, 50 cal heavy machinery, a machine gun, uh, all Warsaw packed heavy machine guns, M16, uh, M1911A1 auto pistol. A 50 cal Browning weighs 84 pounds, add 50 pounds for the ammo. That's about 134 pounds of steel generating um, 2,930 uh, FPS in muzzle velocity at a cyclic rate of 550 uh, RPM. Anyone can handle that. Doesn't need a machine gun to keep me away. 
So this figure, the V1, was originally released in 1986. Uh, with this figure, I, I kind of have the respect just for the fact of it being so especially simple. He just literally comes with a heavy machine gun, machine gun and a tripod to put it on. Um, also, his mold is pretty good for the fact that he's, um, you know, an early Joe. His mold's pretty decent. And, you know, you can see up on the top half of him, he's got a large amount of pockets and padding and, and Velcro and a whole bunch of stuff, different colors. And he's just got his plain white tee underneath. You know, it's the simplicity of this, just topped off by a bit of the color up top, which, you know, I quite like this. So, yeah. Okay, next up, we've got Fast Draw. Uh, file name is Elliot Brown. He's from Tennessee as well. Uh, primary specialty is ordnance. And he's got a secondary special specialty as a Clark typist. So, yeah, that like that cracked me up a bit. This guy, when he's not blowing shit up he's in there banging out reports um from his file card fast draw carries the faf nir which is the fire and forget non-tube launched infantry rocket uh, missile system and wears the necessary protective suit to shield himself from hot exhaust gases uh, the faf nir target acquisition and homing devices are all self-contained in the missile itself, allowing the operator to take cover immediately after launch. Target lock displays are projected on the interior of the helmet faceplate, as well as threat and malfunction warnings. The missile is extremely fast and resistant to ECM jamming. Fast Draw thinks of himself as an old West gunfighter. A whole squadron of Cobra stuns could be rumbling across the landscape at him, and he just stands there with a missile rack in each hand, and that come and get it look in his eyes. You might call him arrogant, but at least he has the firepower to back him up. Um, to me, this is old school. Even though it was released in 87, you know, I missed a lot of those uh, first couple of years of Joe and, and around the 85 to 88 are just prime years for me. And this guy just sits right in that middle part. Uh, what I like about this figure, dude, he's just got a massive weapon system strapped to his back. Um, you know, if this was a real thing, like walking around, uh, feeling like that's a good idea, certain amount of lunacy attached to that. Also, the color scheme uh, for this figure is just really nice as well. Just with the uh, blues, whites and reds. And, you know, it's topped off with a bit of green in there as well. It's a really cool mock. And, I'd, you know, I'd be pretty happy if I saw this one day. This would be something I'd want to own. Okay, next up, Charbroil. Uh, so it's Carl Shannon is his file name. He's an E4. He's from Minnesota. His primary specialty is Flame Weapon Specialist with a secondary specialty as small arms armorer. So there's a bit of a you know conflict there again. This dude is just out there blatting flames on everything. When he's finished with that, he's back in handling the Glocks and the Brownings. Uh, from his file card, it says, as a childhood chore, child brawl was made to heat the water pipes in the family basement with a blowtorch to keep them from freezing and bursting in the winter. As a teenager, he worked in the mills on the Great Lakes, feeding coal into blast furnaces. When the recruiting sergeant asked him what type of job he was interested in, he replied, what have you got with open flames? Uh, flame weapons are scary to the max. Why do you think he wears that asbestos suit? That tank on his back is full of jelly gasoline. Do you know what happens if a hot tracer round hits that? You want to be standing next to him? For a flamethrower specialist, he's a pretty nice guy. But with that thing on his back, he isn't going to win a popularity contest in the middle of a firefight. Okay, so this was released in uh, 1988. And what do I like about this? Well, that just check out that helmet. 
Um, I think that's really the thing from this whole suit that makes him stand out. So it almost, to me, has a terrifying look to it that would look almost demonic behind a massive shot of flame. Um, also, I appreciate that all of the accessories were different to anything we'd seen at this point. And just the orange on that suit, I hadn't, haven't seen that before. I can't remember if the worm was released before this. Uh, I think it was after, but that I've only, I only sort of remember that color. It's like an orange or a brown um, being on the worm. So, so that's Charbrawl. Next up, we've got Hardball. Uh, file name is Wilma Duggleby. He's an E4 from New York, and his primary specialty is infantry, with a secondary specialty is special services. Uh, his file card reads, after five seasons of playing center field in the minor leagues, Hardball came to the realization that the big league scouts just weren't interested in athletic prowess. They wanted star quality. The Joe team was more interested in team players than in stars, and they had a real need for a guy who could judge distances accurately and react quickly with deliberation. Grenade launchers are fitted with adjustable graduated sights calibrated in 25 meter increments. In a firefight, nobody wants to start readjusting sights, especially the blooper man. Hardball can drop a 40 millimeter frag into a bucket from 75 meters simply by eyeballing it. The man's a natural. Um, and I just, I just realized then as well, um, you know, this card coming from an American company that it's talking about a 40 millimeter frag into a bucket from 75 meters. Um, so, you know, using the, the, uh, correct forms of measurement there is a bit weird. It was released in 1988, and the things that I like with this, um, it's just a dude with a massive weapon. Like that grenade launcher, you'd think they would have given him um, a handgun or something with it, not just the grenade launcher and grenades positioned all over his body and backpack. Um, looks cool with the baseball uniform. Uh, the backpack is cool. Just looking at all the spare grenades sitting on it as well. So, yeah, that's hardball. Next up, we've got Repeater. Uh, I'm going to screw this name up for sure, but it's Jeffrey Thuran, I'm going to say. Uh, he's an E6 out of Rhode Island. His primary specialty is infantry with a secondary specialty of heavy weapons. Falkar reads, with close to 20 years in the army, Repeater never got any higher in rank than E6. His performance in the field was always top-notch, but he could never back it up in the garrison. He's not a barracks soldier and never could be. But send him out in the bush beyond the farthest base camp and you'll find out he's the one that the other grunts want a soldier with. This is Jube because he's the one who's going to bring the grunts back in one piece. Being the machine gunner is probably the toughest job in an infantry squad. Number one, he's got the heaviest load to carry. Number two, as soon as he starts firing, the enemy knows where he is and becomes their primary target. Number three, the squad depends on him to keep firing through all of this and provide maneuvering cover. Your machine gunner should always be the strongest, most stand-up troop you have. This figure was released in 1988. Um, and things I like about it, he's got cool cams with a flak jacket on. Um, his type of camouflage, I think, is unique to the line. Um, and the weapon system is badass with that pivot system on his waist. I didn't realize until I actually did these slides just what his face looks like. So on the figure itself... It doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of normal. But damn, check out the artwork on Old Mate Repeater. Um, I think this could have been the early version of the Classified Falcon. 
I, I just, I don't know what's going on with that artwork. But anyway, uh, let's move on to Backblast. Uh, here's Edward Menninger, an E5 out of New York with a primary specialty of air defense artillery with a secondary specialty of signals. His file card reads, Backblast grew up in a house next to one of the busiest airports in the world. His bedroom was directly under the landing path of incoming jets. At night, the landing lights from descending jumbo jets would shine through his window and the vibrations would shake the pocket change off his dresser. When asked his job preferences upon his enlistment, he answered, where can I go to shoot airplanes out of the sky? You get your best shot at a ground attack aircraft when it's coming straight at you. Unfortunately, it usually fires everything it has in your direction. It's the job of the air defense specialist to stand in the open with his launcher aimed at the incoming aircraft and wait for the lock-on signal before he can fire. I'm glad it's his job and not mine. So this figure was released in 1989. Uh, the things I like about it, it's got lots of intricate accessories. Um, this isn't sort of like... Um, you know, some of the others where it just has a couple of just shooting missiles. You can actually see he's got his system. He's got his bandolier. Um, he's got the bit that holds on to the uh, missile tubes. He's got his um, monocular. Yeah, there's just some more intricate stuff in there. The Go Army written on his shirt and his little notepad as well on his knee are pretty cool. I just don't know what that bandolier is for. So let me know in the comments if you can, if you know, because um, it doesn't look like it's for anything that's going in the weapon that he's got. But let me know. Uh, next up, we've got Downtown. This is Thomas Riley. He's an E4 out of Ohio. His primary specialty is infantry with a secondary specialty of special ops. His file card reads, uh, a highly mobile rapid strike force like G.I. Joe can't depend on slow, ponderous artillery to keep up with them. They need to bring their own fire support with them in the form of a high-powered mortar, but a mortar man can only carry a, lot, a limited number of shells, so he'd better be able to make every shot count. Downtown can judge range and trajectory just by eyesight. If he knows where the target is, he can hit it. If Downtown sets up his mortar in the parking lot of a ballpark and had a spotter sitting in the bleachers, he could put a round on the second base bag within two attempts. Downtown picked up his name playing high school basketball. He didn't have the height for slam dunks, but he had the reputation for never missing a foul shot. Okay, this figure was released in 1989. Um, things I like with this is his handgun is really unique. I've never seen it again. Uh, it wasn't a reuse. It was just really unique. Um, and also the intricacy of his mortar equipment is just really unique and appreciated. You know, having just all these different components of the mortar and carrying the shells on the back of his bag, it's just really nice. It's great stuff. All right, on to one of the big boys. Now, particularly uh, picked Rock and Roll V2 for this. Um, so it's Craig McConnell, an E6 from Malibu in California. Primary specialty infantry with a secondary specialty of PT instructor. So his file card, whoop, his file card says, uh, Rock and Roll has served with the GI Joe team since its inception. Has been consistently updating his equipment and his skills. These days, primary iron is the General Monopoly's 5.56 six-barreled electronically driven mini Gatling gun machine gun. Sorry, mini Gatling machine gun. It's fitted with inert gas recoil absorbers and scoped with third generation laser optics. This weapon, including power pack and factory loaded thousand round ammo drum, weighs in at 85 pounds 
and delivers 4,000 rounds per minute at a muzzle velocity of 3,300 feet per second. When rock and roll was a surfer and a weightlifter back home in Malibu, he used to play electric guitar in local bands. During that time, his ears become accustomed to loud amplified noises. So today, whenever he hears the roar of his mini Gatling gun laying down maximum suppressor fire, the sound of it is simply music to his ears. Okay, this V2 was released in 1989. And I just really um, just love just the amount of firepower this guy comes with. You know, just uh, dual Gatling guns. Um, he's got, you know, the thousand round drum on his back. And the thing that cracks me up is he still then has a like a Winchester rifle strapped to his right leg. Um, yeah, it's just great. It's a pretty great figure, pretty hardcore. Um, just quickly, please take this opportunity if you're not subscribed to my account uh, to yeah sub and you know if you enjoy the content, hit that like button. But let's hit the last one, and this is probably my favorite of a lot of the heavy hitters today. Rampart. So Dwayne Felix, an E4 out of New York. His primary specialty is shoreline defender. And his secondary specialty is air defense artillery missile specialist. Rampart spent most of his teenage years in video arcades or glued to his home video game monitor. Being gifted with abnormally rapid reflexes and extraordinary hand-eye coordination, he quickly mastered every known video game in existence. By the time he had graduated from college, Rampart realized there was only one line of work best suited to challenge his abilities, and that was the military. He enlisted in the Navy, specializing in air defense artillery, and in time attained the highest combat success ration in the 7th Fleet for splashing enemy aircraft. Proficiency in most video games depends upon one's ability to quickly analyze shifts in the spatial movement of images and to react to such changes faster than anyone else. The same is true in destroying incoming enemy missiles. Rampart gets his jolly seeing a Cobra Heatseeker explode just before it hits the target. It beats the heck out of logging initials into a video game's top 10 listing. So this figure was released in 1990. It was one of my personal childhood favorites. Um, I've recently been able to pick up the, the mock for this thanks to Jordan Satardi, someone from our local uh, G.I. Joe community in Australia. Um, what do I love about this? You know, the outfit for this guy is unique. Um, it's just different colors, um, different look from a lot of the other figures that were released up to 1990. And the weapons load for this guy is just showing he's not mucking around. So you've got his, um, you know, heavy machine gun strapped to his right hand side. And then he comes with the air defense, air defense artillery piece um, with rounds. So yeah, just great. I absolutely love this figure and I love the mock and I'm just so happy it's been uh, brought into my house again. That's it today for uh, Heavy Hitters of G.I. Joe. Um, what did you think about the list, the top 10? Let me know in the comments and I'm sure I missed some. There was actually some I turned down. Uh, ones like Bazooka um, just didn't make the list. But if you feel that there should have been some that should have made the list, let me know in the comments. Uh, apart from that, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.